At some point, you hope people realize that just about everything in our modern diet and lifestyle is poisoning us, table salt being no exception. It's kind of misleading. You assume salt is just something from the ocean. In reality, table salt is a highly processed food created in a laboratory with chemicals added, extensively heated. Is this what has given salt a bad rap? Is this why sodium intake is associated with negatives? Some people are as afraid of salt as they are of cholesterol as red meat or eggs. Just like many other things we consume, it's not about the food itself, which is how people think. It's about the quality, how it was created, how the plant was grown, how the animal was raised. Conventional store-bought chicken is poisonous compared to wild turkey. The same concept applies here. So table salt is processed, whereas the land and sea salts are typically not. It's heated over 1,000 degrees to destroy impurities, but that also removes any beneficial trace minerals, which isn't really that significant. The majority of salt is sodium and chloride. Sodium chloride is what salt is referred to as less than 2% of those other minerals. I would be more concerned about how the body processes something heated so extensively as opposed to that minuscule mineral content. Then anti-caking agents are added to prevent the salt from clumping together. Some of these contain aluminum, which you know, we did a video on, highly toxic to the body, especially the brain. Another example of an anti-caking agent is magnesium stearate, which is made of inflammatory seed oils. I think typically palm oil. And you'll see people argue that oh, you should consume table salt because they fortify it with iodine and everyone's iodine deficient. But the amount of iodine in table salt isn't really significant. It might prevent goiter or severe iodine deficiencies, but to keep up with the fluoride and the chlorine, the bromide, all of these halogens they dump in the water supply, and to actually achieve an optimal thyroid function, <laughs> table salt, not gonna do that. Most of this table salt is actually in the processed foods people are eating, whether they're dumping bags of it in the factories to make this crap, or a restaurant chef, you know, dousing a steak with a handful of salt. You know, people aren't physically putting the salt on their food, you know, so psychologically, they feel like, oh, I'm not eating that much salt because they think salt is bad for them, but Here's what I think. Unrefined salts are not heated, manipulated, or altered in any way. That slight mineral content that remains gives them their unique flavor and taste. Much more enjoyable and saltier than sea salt. So that chef throwing handfuls of salt would only have to use a tiny amount of it, a few flakes of salt on the food. And this is why people think table salt has a higher sodium content than sea salt because everyone is overusing the bland table salt as opposed to properly salty natural salts. As with most things, when you step away from nature, you know, you overconsume, you underconsume, you ingest chemicals, negatives that affect your metabolism in a bad way. Sea salt is simply produced by evaporating seawater, and I've seen videos of it where, you know, they dig these types of giant pools and then as the tide goes in and goes out, it leaves the salt, it dries in the sun, and then people go in with either hand tools or machines to gather that salt. Now, some of these are processed, most of them aren't. Either way, sea salt should probably be avoided because of ocean pollution. Land salts, such as Himalayan pink salt, are mined underground or on the surface in some cases, but I've heard negative things about you know, Himalayan pink salt, such as radioactive minerals or lead contaminants, as well as heavy metals. And there could be a lot of logistical stuff that I'm not aware of. Like who knows if they're using dynamite in the salt mining, you know, is there chemical residue? What about the heavy machinery they're using? Is oil getting on the salt? I don't know. You know certain ocean salts might be relatively safe. Others could be polluted beyond belief. You know, your Himalayan pink salt might be perfectly fine, or you could be eating as much lead as is in the Flint, Michigan water. One thing my viewers have brought up is microplastics in salt, and 
you know, this is a concern for both the table salt and sea salt. You know, heating it, processing it apparently doesn't remove the microplastics. Not so much the land salt to my knowledge, but you know, this ties into ocean pollution. You know, microplastics aren't separate from the chemicals and the crap we're dumping in our ocean. Now, usually I'll have a video idea for several days before, you know, the whiteboard Wednesday, but you know, today I actually had to sit down at my computer and figure out what video I wanted to do. So I was going through my list of ideas and I saw table salt on there and you know, it wasn't really an interesting topic to me, but I did just launch two salts on Frankie's free range meat, which are both from Mountain Springs. So this seems to be, you know, the perfect harvesting method. You know, you avoid those contamination problems from both the ocean and the land salts. And I think that's the most important thing with anything you're putting in your body. As I've stated so many times before, avoid the negative, remove those negatives from your diet and lifestyle, and balance out the positives. You know, eating super nutritious foods while poisoning yourself with tap water isn't going to fix your health. And that's usually how people start exploring health, exploring nutrition. You know, they drink turmeric shots or celery juice and they think adding something positive or beneficial to their lifestyle is going to make them healthy. Whereas in reality, you need to remove all the bad stuff you're doing first. You know, I've done several videos on salt in the past, and this certainly isn't going to be a raw hard argument over whether uh, is salt necessary or not. It's a vital nutrient for maintaining your blood pressure, incredibly essential for nerd and muscle function. I even remember when I was trying raw primal for like five to six months, and I went to the doctor to have my blood pressure checked, uh, which was when I was visiting the doctor because of my liver problems. It was super duper low. I think it was like 80 over 50, something crazy. Now I salt my food to taste, and my natural instinct will tell me if the food is too salty or if it needs more salt. And in cases where I would eat like a pound or two of prosciutto, I actually wouldn't want to consume salt for the next few days. So your body can really tell you how much to consume. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, hopefully this helps some of you out. Maybe you buy your family members or friends some high quality salt. Uh, so please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. If you guys could please, you know, sign up for the newsletter on frank I don't really say this enough and I'm trying to build up you know, a way to communicate with you guys, you know, so in the future uh, I can do that more. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.